Okay, so today I have Thierry Baudet. Is that how, your last name? Is that right? Uh, yes. Thierry Baudet. And uh, he's a in the Dutch Parliament. And is a very unusual guest for me to have. This first guest I've, where I had to go through a publicist, which is very fancy. I, I really felt very fancy doing that. It's something I should do, I, although it's probably something I would just uh, have to do myself and pretend it was me and give another email. But uh, Thierry is, I discovered, he's first of all, he's following me on Twitter. And I thought, my God, uh, and I saw it, he's a politician following me on Twitter. And then I discovered there's other ones as well. I think the uh, foreign... Uh, some some big uh, some official of Brazil follows me, and some ex president of uh, Lithuania or something. So you're not the only one. But what I discovered about you is that we both wrote books about um, classical art versus modernism, which I thought was amazing. So I definitely want to ask you about that. But maybe uh, introduce yourself the way you would you would normally. <laughs> Don't let me do it. Sorry. Thank you. But um, uh, to be honest, you haven't quite introduced yourself to me. Oh, uh, that's, true. So, that's true. That's true. Uh, we know each other through Twitter, and I'm excited to be in your podcast. But um, what if, what is your name? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brendan Hurd is my name, uh, and I'm just a guy on Twitter. Yeah, I'm just it's my podcast, but it's just my work shed. So uh, it's you know not the, so, um, probably the greatest publicity you'll ever have. I'm sorry. To... You, uh, you, you. I noticed you because you have uh, you send out exciting tweets. And I thought it was it was important to to connect. So I'm excited to be in your show. I think uh, I'm a politician. I'm a member of the Dutch Parliament, and uh, I'm um, I'm the leader of a conservative uh, or populist uh, or freedom loving or libertarian party, which is called Forum for Democracy. But um, from the very beginning, I felt that it was of seminal importance to connect the political struggle with a cultural struggle. This is something that most uh, right-wing politicians have, by and large, left behind. They haven't done anything with it. So um, that's why I started following you. That's why I think it's important to be on this podcast, because we, we're we not talking about culture enough. Right. And you would, this, the book you'd written about art, was that before you got into politics, or was that after? Yeah, yeah, before. It was. It was before. Yeah, because I also wrote a book on it. So I don't know, like in modernism and the, that's you, your book is Oika, Oika, is it Oikophobia is the book as well as the video yes. series? Is that right? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. And yeah. so I saw the videos here. So Oikophobia, Oika is, uh, I guess, Greek for family. And your premise there is fear of the family structure, fear of traditional. The home. Oikos fear of the actually home, sorry. home, yeah. So we, we, are in, we live in in a constant state of destructing our home. That is the dominant trend in the West, in my view. And um, we have to re reclaim the home. We have to reclaim it through politics, by limiting immigration, by limiting transnational power structures and so on, but also through architecture, music, uh, the arts in general. It's, it's, um, these are connected phenomena. And it's, it's, it's old that we're disconnecting these phenomena in the modern age because mm -hmm. whenever we look at for example the renaissance period or um, um, the imperialist period in the second half of the 19th century for example or the the fascist period we we connect political views to artistic views it's a very normal thing for historians to do to to uh, to identify you know, communist um, architecture or um, yeah. typical colonial uh, uh, housing blocks or whatever. So, and, and, but, but strangely enough, we're not doing it with our current period of time, whereas it's so obvious to me that modern architecture is the same as the euro currency, for, for, for instance, or the European Union, or et, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's like the bland everyman, and they think they're the final. They think they've reached the final stage or something, and there's no, they don't. They don't even think about the past or the future. I don't think in terms, and certainly not aesthetically speaking. But right, yeah, the yeah, and it's the same the world over. Any city, any major city now, not like certainly in the West, anyways, they all look are building the same kind of thing. So they're indistingu indistinguishable, perfect yes. globalist uh, thing, I guess. Yes. Yeah, they do go hand in hand. Yeah, a lot of people do not address. So do you find you have good uh, success with that bringing uh, that approach in in Holland and in, in politics well uh, democracy is an is an old system isn't it it's um 
<laughs> yeah. So how? What, what do you mean by success? I think we well, are... do you, do, you, do, do you find a lot of pushback or do you find people agreeing a lot? I'm, I'm not. There, are, there, there is a, uh, a certain group of people, uh, roughly 10 to 20 percent of, of the, the general population who do see these things and who are willing to fight. But um, the powers that we're up against are... Um, very uh, serious and they're global and um, uh, the vast majority of the people don't really care about anything and they just live their lives and so um, I, I'm, I'm sure we're we're doing some good here and there but um, I'm rather pessimistic about the idea that we can change the world really okay well, that's a bold statement um... But you're trying anyways, and you so you you think it's you would you would think you have to it's like a cyclone we have to pass through before. Well, I'm trying to change things, but also I find joy in speaking the truth, and I think living in the truth and living in 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 an honest relationship with your feelings and expressing them in a in a serious way just makes your life meaningful. Well, that's very unusual as a politician, I think, to say that, but yeah. That's, yeah, it's very that's awesome. unusual. I'm the I'm the least political politician you'll ever meet. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like that too. I mean, so was the uh, the foreign minister of Brazil that was following me too. He was fairly. I mean, uh, that's they could they get away with more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what can I ask when you in your book? What did you what did you pinpoint as? Did you try to? Were you just sort of pointing out these same things, or did you get down to? Uh, the really what's to blame in, in the core of modernism or what what was going on like did you in your book or or since in terms of aesthetics um yeah i do i do write about that um also in in some other books so in in, in total i've uh, published 12 books now and in in several of the books i discuss several elements of of this okay. uh, in my view it so i've also written a book about music for example classical okay. music uh, and in my view, in general, when it comes to architecture, uh, sculpture, um, uh, and music, uh, the the real the, the seizure, the breaking point is this, the First World War and the years that follow it. And um, uh, it's it's quite clear that uh, there were several radical movements, uh, but the the success of them. I think it must be attributed to some deep state promotion that happened after the Second World War. So the ideas were born in the, it, after the First World War, but their their mass promotion happened after 1945. Yeah. Um, we know from quite a lot of research that the CIA, for example, in their denazification program, supported atonal music, supported mm -hmm. uh, Stockhausen and other horrible things to destroy the German sense of aesthetics, it is the German sense of, of music. And we also yeah. know that they promoted uh, abstract uh, art, like Jackson Pollock and so on, to, 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 to appear more modern than the Soviet Union and so on. Um, so I think it's probably, it's probably part of a program of, of destroying Europe destroying the European culture that is in some way organized by deep state uh, actors but uh, I, I do not um, I do not have um, knockdown evidence about this I, I don't I, I'm I'm not a real real believer in the power of ideas okay I believe that ideas don't really change things I think uh, guns usually change things oh. hard <laughs> money. Very bold so, talk. Well, yeah, that's no, true. but I, I, I think wars and and, and yeah, banks and those those things really change things. So who's behind those things? I I don't really know, but it's it's happening, and it's it's very bad. Mm, very bad. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, it, great question mark. It's it's been going on. We've we've lived we've been living in in the in, in the um, systematic destruction of the European world. We've been experiencing it for. Um, for like 70 years now, 75 years. Yeah. Um, and um, it's terrible. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it certainly, it began, I think, with the art criticism, I think, were the ones that really solidified in, the, in, in between the world wars. The art critics came up with the language of describing modernism and making it lofty sounding and philosophical. <laughs> and, uh, and then they're I'm the ones sure who. There's lots of that, but also, there, you would have been able to find lots of different art critics. So, why were these art critics yeah. uh, quoted all the time? Why, why did it become popular? Yes, exactly. Yes, I think they had friends in the media, I think, is what we could say. Well, but, yeah, but you're talking to a conspiracy theorist, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, was, no. I, I, I was educated by people who believed in the power of ideas. So I did my PhD in political philosophy uh, with a man called Roger Scruton, who was a philosopher, and, um, and he was uh, a firm uh, believer in the power of ideas. Yeah. And he believed that books could change the world, and he believed that if we make arguments clear enough then people will read them and they'll be like oh well i've you know i'll change my mind i'll do something else and i'm i'm a lot more skeptical about that oh i didn't know you studied under roger scruton that's amazing yeah i uh, that's another amazing fact um so you, you sort of knew him personally and everything did you you obviously oh yeah 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 well i and uh, we... stayed at his house and i um really I was, uh, wow yeah he he um he he uh, introduced me to um, Wagner's Parsifal, and I I went to uh, I went fox hunting with him, and I uh, I drank uh, wonderful Sauterne with him. That is uh, the the same Sauterne that is drunk in uh, Bright's Head Revisited when we entered Oxford. It was, it was great. We had beautiful moments together. Wow, amazing! It was, that it was a mentor. Amazing. Yeah, and so you were. You were studying a PhD, so then you so this inspired you. Your beliefs inspired you to go into politics. Is that right? Um, in a way, because well, I, I developed strong beliefs about um, the importance of sovereignty, the importance of uh, traditional architecture, the importance of the well, basically the 19th century view of of life, which I support in general. I mean, there's always details where you can diverge, but in in general, I'm a 19th century. And I thought, well, let's let's rebuild the 19th century. So I started up a political party, and uh, I thought, well, let's let's go for the elections. And then I realized that power is somewhere else. It's not in Parliament. It's it's a ridiculous idea that the Parliament doesn't decide anything. Uh, elected officials don't decide anything. It's all it's all theater. It's it's completely fake. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. They're yeah. acting. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm now in Parliament. I'm in a I'm in a stage. I'm in a movie set, essentially. <laughs> okay. No, oh. to, hear this from, to hear this from someone on the inside is really. Uh, it's uh, it's hilarious. Miles. It's hilarious. It's a hilarious place to be, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it's 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 a fantasy to believe that you can actually change things from from politics. That's that's a categorical so, mistake. And so, do you believe it's entirely top down influence, or is it like? Ground up and top down at the same time, like because now people are so brain, so so thoroughly brainwashed. You know, you um, know what I mean. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, probably it's a three factor thing. So it's mm -hmm. it's partly top down, bottom, partly bottom up, but there's a significant part which is process. And and processes simply move in a certain direction. They have their own a will of their own in a way so what happens is that some nitwit some some stupid guy who is selected for his stupidity becomes a minister right that's how you become a government official so the okay. first day he comes to office let's say he becomes the minister of healthcare, and he obviously typically he wouldn't typically he's fat he typically he's fat and like looks unhealthy and, 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 and selected for not knowing anything about healthcare, right? <laughs> because that's how you become a... So right. the first day in office, 8.30 yeah. in the morning, you know, suit, very important. His wife, for the first time in 15 years, has made love to him again. And he... and it's Because he's proud of him, and everybody's proud of him, and the whole family's proud, and he has a driver and a car and everything. And then, and then so he, he enters the ministry, the building, 15,000 civil servants. And they're all lined up with with dossiers, with files, 15 centimeters of paperwork. And he doesn't yeah. have a, 
he doesn't have a clue in the world what's going on, right? That's how you become a minister. And they're like, and the only thing they're thinking about is how am I going to maintain my position? What, how am I going to play the journalist? How am I going to play the other, the the levers of power in a way that I will, in four years' time, I will I will be thought of as a, a good minister. That's the only thing that, that, that that's in their minds. So they don't actually decide things. They haven't they haven't got a clue what's going on with COVID, for example. They they they've never even thought about it. They haven't even they haven't got time to read a single book. So <laughs> these these people are just they're they're sportsmen. They're just in the gym. They're running, but they haven't got time to to, to look at the treadmill. They're they're not even aware. They're like rats in a you know they're running, but they're not mm-hmm. aware that they're not actually running towards something. They're just keeping a wheel spinning. So they're and, they're propelled. They're partially propelled by the bureaucracy itself. It just kind of keeps. Yes, exactly. So that, 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 that very smart of you. That's that's one of the things. And, and then there's another element, which is the, which is the global. The global trends, the, the big banks, the big power blocks, and that's yeah. what's injecting the directions into things. And yeah. I haven't gotten around to what exactly is going on at that level because obviously I'm not <laughs> invited to the Davos conferences. But it's it's quite obvious to me that all these things are coordinated on a global level. That is why we have the same architecture. That is why we had the same COVID measures. That is why we have the same immigration policies across the Western world. Mm. Otherwise, there yeah. would have been at least one outlier, and there isn't. Yeah, no, it's true. And certainly the Western world, yeah. I mean, I would have theories on it, but I mean, this we have to stay YouTube friendly anyway, so we won't get into that. But uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is interesting too, isn't it? I was thinking about Voltaire. Voltaire said, "If you want to know who is in power, just think who you can't criticize." Mm. And yes, I, the same happened with ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. If you want to know which medicines work against COVID, have a look at the ones that were banned. Right, it's, <laughs> it's it's the same thing. We live in such an inversion of truth. It's it's hilarious. Yes, it's a bit it's a bit pathetic that more normal type people don't notice or stand up for it even a little bit. I mean, maybe they want to. I don't know. Some people, some, some maybe sort of tr- are trying. Like this trucker thing in Canada, where I'm from, is kind of s- sort of there. Maybe where, where they Canada? wouldn't understand the full story or comprehend. Well, the the truckers that are like besieging Trudeau, and he's like put he's now put emergency measures. Have you heard about this? Yeah, no. I, where are you from in Canada? Oh, where, I'm in Ireland. Ireland. Sorry, I'm from Canada, oh, but I'm, oh, I'm in Ireland. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and Trudeau, like, like, so what do you think of him? Like, he's like very. He seems really frightened, and uh, like he's a really he's one of the most delusional politicians I think of them all. Like, he really believes this stuff. Like, he's. What would you? What's your assessment of him? You don't know. <laughs> I, I think my my assessment of these people is that they are psychopaths in the clinical sense of the word. Uh, so I don't I don't necessarily mean it in a derogatory way, like the American horror movies or something. But they're 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 technically psychopaths. They they do not have a relationship with the truth. That is my uh, assessment. So. Uh, uh, on the basis of, of having met these people in Parliament in the past couple of years at conferences and so on, they are interested in fundamentally different things from the things that intellectuals or or uh, artistic people uh, that which are the ones that I cl- would classify myself in um, are interested in. They, yeah. they, they so Trudeau does he actually believe all these things or is he just very aware that the powers that be, the global conspirators, demand this from him. I I don't I don't know. I've I've no means to know. True. But it's it's, it's it is true that he is playing the role very convincingly, and yeah. um, and he does come across as if he he genuinely feels that he is the mankind savior and. Uh, and uh, and but the weird thing to me is I oh, that's, that's like psychopathy. Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, I think so. Yes, that's the weird thing to me is that I've always I have a sort of an unpleasant feeling in my belly, around my my belly button, whenever I watch these people on television, and it's a very strong. It's a gut feeling. 
and I have it. I have it with almost all of the politicians, and I didn't have it with Trump until the the the, the they they frauded the elections and 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 pushed him out of the office. Um, and now he comes across as a faker to me as well. And it's, yeah, it's I think very weird. It's a very strong, deep feeling. And I would I would immediately leave a cafe, you know, if, if I were, would be, it, it would be impossible for me to be friends with these people. Boris Johnson was sympathetic to me until he became came into power. And I, I, I can't watch him anymore. I, it's just, I don't want to see it. It's just... I, yeah, well, he's a real political animal. He would be a real, maybe not a psychopath, but he would somewhat along the lines of those people you're saying for sure. And Trump, I think, I think they had something on him. I'd say they have pictures of him on Epstein's Island or something. And, uh, you know, yeah, or they just showed him, they just showed him a video of uh, John F. Kennedy's assassination and they said, <laughs> uh, you have a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the power of these people is, is com comparable to the power of a um, uh, modern army invading a, some uh, uh, African tribe or something. We are, we are absolutely fucking nowhere when it comes to the, the, the yeah. powers that we're up against. So, and that's also why I, I, I keep tweeting these clown world memes because it just, I, I, the only thing I can do to, to, to stay alive and to, to cope with it in a way is to, to laugh it off. Yeah, most of your tweets in the, are in Dutch, so I can't actually, I don't even know what you're saying. But you see yeah. the smileys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so what, can I ask what you, would you have a prediction as to how you think it will play out? Because it seems to me like they're at, they're, they've got a, a two-part problem. They do have absolute power, but also they're completely delusional. And they're tearing everything apart at the same time as they're enforcing their tyranny. So there must be a, like a, a yeah. meeting point where their decrepitude makes things like literally falling, like unsustainable is what I think. Like that we're heading towards something, not necessarily an apocalypse, but something where things break down and maybe then there's a chance of breaking free. Would you have any predictions like that? Or I understand the the train of thought, um, but I'm not so sure. It, it's obvious that the, po the politicians are incompetent to the level that is just, it's hilarious. But... Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that the actual people behind that are so incompetent. And I think that the system, that the, the, the way they've used the, the COVID narrative and the lies about it to introduce the digital ID and the QR codes and the, and the injections of, of stuff into your body, uh, it's damn smart. Let's be honest. Let's recognize the quality of our, our opponents. I mean, how do, you, how do you even come up with such a such a thing and 9-11 9-11 right. obviously how how do you make this up <laughs> getting people getting people to believe that some guy in a cave i mean it's just it's pretty smart I mean, even though yeah you don't you, but you, you don't see it you don't see it so you think they can just enslave us i mean they're you know I don't know. I, maybe you're right. So you, you figured at least one for a long time. I think we're going to to lose this battle, and I think we're going to be the last generation that has smelled uh, freedom. And I think, um, yeah, I think we're going to be in a in a matrix kind of the, the matrix kind of situation where <laughs> ignorance God. is bliss, and uh, I don't I don't see much light at the end of the tunnel. I, I think we're I think we've lost it. That's why they allow people to, like me to still to, to live and, and say what I because they know that I, I can't get to them. And I'm right. happy that I can't get to them because otherwise I would have to fear for my life. Right, right. True. Well, I still think that there's got to be some kind of, you know, when they when they when you have nuclear power plants being run by, you know, dare I say, like lesbians and Somalians and, uh, you know, you think things with the structure of the system itself. Well, that's actually so they took away the, the nuclear uh, powers from Africa when they destroyed apartheid. That's that's no, obvious. Yeah, but Europe Europe will soon be like Africa, and you know, or we're going to, we're going to be like Lebanon. Lebanon, okay. Uh, I think, and the, the 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 my view is that why they want this, why they want the destruction of our nations and the destruction of our intelligence structures and so on, 
uh, I mean, societal intelligence structures like academias, and is because then you will have to have uh, global global governance. That is my view. So they're destroying the nation state, they're destroying sovereign governments, they're destroying family structures and so on and so forth to atomize the individual to such an extent that he will surrender to whatever global bureaucracy they're trying to implement. And you don't see any hope in places like Russia or China or, you know, Iran or... Not in China. Uh, I don't see any hope from China. I... Yeah, I, I do think that, that Putin has some kind of potential for leadership of the free world, but um, I don't know. The signals, as, as Yoda, Master Yoda would say, the future clouded. Clouded the future is. <laughs> I, the signals from Russia are very ambivalent, I find. Well, I do agree it's going to be dark and that it's fairly, it's going to get worse and like a lot worse, but I don't know. I can't see them. I do, like these, they don't have omnipotent powers. And even amongst that elite, you, you can say they're, there's a cleverness there, but a lot of their cleverness is just kind of an arrogance that they're, you know, I think from what I can know from, if I really know anything about them at all, that they are deeply flawed and they do believe some of their own horseshit as well. And that's, that's a mistake on their part. Yeah. But uh, in terms of like people rising up in a war, like revolution and pick, picking up their pitchforks. No, I don't think that's going to happen. Not anytime soon. But, but um but do you then uh do you then think that um there there will be some kind of um uh system system failure like the soviet union uh, which is perhaps the way the soviet union fell if it even fell um you figure a uh, system failure like in their governance yeah no i i, I like i feel like there's going there's already be, be, we're seeing cracks in like basic everyday system failure of like just the system to basically run things like, you know, bridges and bus routes and things like, every, you know, all right. this basic stuff. It's already getting quite shabby looking. And I don't know, yeah. even things like that. Normal people do notice, I think more, they, they notice the price of bread. They'll, they'll go crazy over the price that you can like, you know, their, their grandkids can get uh, raped by grooming gangs. But if you raise the price of bread by 10 more cents or something, then they go crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Well, so. I mean, well, we're, we're, one thing is for sure, we're, we're entering very uh, unclear waters and, and very, um, very novel times. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, who knows? I, I'm yeah. very, in any case, I'm very uh, comforted. And that's also how we, we, we got into this conversation and how we got connected in the first place through Twitter, that there there is such a thing as beauty. And this is also the, if you remember the final chapter of, or the, one of the final chapters of the uh, Rave New World, where, where they believe that the, that the path to truth it ultimately is not through rational argument or philosophy, but is through beauty. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and the wonderful thing about it is that it's, it's in a way perceived as, as unpolitical. So promoting political truth might uh, meet uh, psychological defense mechanisms in people, but aesthetic truth might open their hearts and then create some something new. I'm I'm more of a separatist than a than a democrat or a re revolutionist. So I, I I would prefer to to go to an island or to an, to set up a new state. Uh, um with with people who do see it people who, who do wish to live in a different way but yeah. but 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 still you you're going to need something that will bind people and i think a much stronger thing to bind people than than political argument is is beauty and uh, and there's well so that's true yeah to take from history there's such an incredible example that that europeans have set in that regard yeah, and uh, Plato, we really was the one who uh, said be linked beauty to, to goodness, and it has been thought yeah. of that way, and it's true, I believe as well. But I think really the ultimate way is, and I know I think I read you're a bit of a agnostic, anyways. But I think re like religion and cults <laughs> are truly the way to uh, unite people. Like even you see with the likes of say Alex Jones 
you know, it's really his all his raving about demons and stuff that get the people gets you know his huge audience gets them going in terms of like really dead yeah. normal people once again that's really how the best way to excite them i think but uh so yeah. you'd have to yeah. drop the politics and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. drop the politics and start a new cult to uh mithra well, me no i thought you were going to do it but, uh... <laughs> well you know i've tried you know I, I don't have your charisma and i don't have the the politician's charm to uh the uh you know the cult of personality you need to get, to get them around you and you say the right things but i think that is one of the better ways to do it but um yeah so you don't i was in um amsterdam uh, like most people but I, I stayed there for like several months before i moved to ireland i remember it was beautiful like there is the whole degenerate uh you know hookers in the windows thing but like the architecture it was really unique i didn't know much about um holland before i went to be honest and i saw all the golden age paint you know the reichs museum and learn more about the history of it it really was it really is amazing and there's a lot of really beautiful stuff in in amsterdam like people just think of it you know to smoke joints in the cafe or whatever but like, yeah it was amazing. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world is it still like this was 10 years ago or more since i was there and also i should say had the most beautiful girls i've ever seen i think riding around on their bikes honestly and i like compared to paris or anywhere i remember amsterdam just being amazed <laughs> by that Another good argument for beautiful architecture. It creates beautiful women. It's uh... yeah, those walkable spaces. You can't have your car. You got to go around your bike and and walk, and everyone's fit. Uh, but yeah. Um. So yeah, we covered a lot of doom and gloom and uh, <laughs> a little bit of art. But uh, it, certainly, you were much more forthright speaking than I than I imagined. I didn't. I, you really have given up, I guess, or you <laughs> get away with it. I thought it'd be a lot more political speech, and be you'd be dancing around the topics instead of like. <laughs> yeah. Right but yeah that's that's great that's good to get to, good to get to know your view and every, are you so what are you planning on doing now are you going to continue with the uh Wikophobia and uh or, i um i set up a publishing house which is called uh, amsterdam books uh oh. and we're we're also looking to publish books about beauty and also do more in multimedia things so um, start a podcast on traditional architecture, start a podcast on, on classical music and, and all these things. So if you're ever willing to you know, join forces, you'll be most welcome. I've oh, also set up a, or I am setting up a, uh, a network of like-minded people in the Netherlands who can then, uh, you know, kind of like a parallel society, but that's a little bit too strong a wording, but they can connect with each other. They can help each other find uh, like-minded restaurant holders we're setting up schools we're setting up elementary schools and we're going to set up high schools in the netherlands for like-minded people so we're really uh trying to build a world of our own to to live well, so you do have some hope then that sounds very hopeful compared to everything else you're saying that sounds you know yeah you really well some tiny glimmer of hope <laughs> yeah it's it's like um, do you remember uh, if you've read the Curzio Malaparte, the great Italian author, he writes about the, um, uh, the, the the dying body that will still start repairing a scratch on his skin. Um, but um, uh, we can't. No, no. But I, I do have. <laughs> I don't want to end this interview in such a way. No, I do. I do feel that bottom up, when 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 actual people get together and and create something tangible, something real, for their uh, for the people in their surroundings, that that can change things, and that is important. It's just that I've, I'm, I'm skeptical about the top-down political way. But but these well, things. I, I, are uh, Sorry. That uh, throws up at me again. There. Sorry. Yeah, I'm. I'm I actually re very recently got um, very badly shadow banned on Twitter. So you can tell that they're as they, they are cracking down on just aesthetic things because mostly I just post aesthetic things and in these schools of yours I don't know if you have a plan what I think is that it needs we can't just return to the old styles we need a new style that isn't stupid and intentionally ugly so how we go about yeah. that is a whole other matter because that requires like studying carefully the old styles knowing them in and out like especially the, where it, where it dropped off if you ask me it dropped off after Art Nouveau and Art, Art Deco was the last really good stuff um, so you'd have to like somehow like if you can backtrack and retrace and then try to find a new way i don't know but i do need you, you need the new art and new styles we can't just like make gothic again you know for another over and over because sure 
Um, I don't know the answer to that one though. That's another tough. We'll 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 find out along the way. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Rembrandt yeah. didn't know what he was going to paint uh, when he started. Uh, when he was twelve years old or fifteen years old, he didn't know what he was going to grow into. Beethoven could never conceive of his late quartets when he started writing in a Haydn style when he was young. So it's just it has to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. And I will consider you um, from now on the extension of the work of uh, Roger Scruton, since <laughs> which you, in many ways, probably are. Yeah. Like well, I'm say. I'm very uh, honored with that class, uh, qualification. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. I guess we've uh, discussed everything. <laughs> we everything YouTube will allow us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a good the day. Thank you. Okay, Thierry. Thanks a lot. And I'll shut it down there, and we'll talk to you there. Okay. okay. See you, bye.